My ego kinda stocky, homie nigga, you a hater if you tell me I ain't popping, homie. Yo, 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 it's Jumpman T with Twisted Torch TV. I'm back again. Turn me up in your headphones. There's two videos in the same day. You know how I'm rocking, man. It's, it's already a busy week for me. You know, I got a full time, full time job on. You know, I get down. So let's talk about the state of the franchise. Now that the 2020 season is over, what do we really need in order to be successful for the 2021 season? Let's chop it up. First of all, AB, Arthur Blank. Um, Rich McKay, they had their meeting, you know, the end of the season meeting, and it seems like they still want to win. Regardless, they want to prepare for the future, but they still want to win today. In all honesty, I don't see us having that same team that we had in 2008 to where we had a lot of money in cap to where we can get some free agencies as far as Michael Turner, as far as bringing Tony G in. We don't have that. It's hard for us. To, we're, we're pretty much dead in cap, so we can't just bring people in. So for all y'all seeing me to draft a QB for the future, I can dig it. I understand it. You know, Arthur Blank has made it clear that no one's job is safe. It's based on what the GM and the head coach want to do, who we hire. So, in all honesty, if I know how head coaching is, they're going to still want to win. Um, I've seen Deshaun Watson talking about he want to get traded. I don't know why we could get Deshaun Watson because, I mean, he just got paid. If we give them a first rounder and trade Matt Ryan, are we, you know, we still aren't building the defense. So that's a tough situation to do. Like, I don't see us getting him. Deshaun Watson is from GA. Uh, he has been with Atlanta Falcons. He does like Atlanta Falcons. I just don't know how that works out. If we, if we got the fourth overall pick, why would we spend money and give a first rounder when we can just draft somebody? I don't, I don't see that. Trevor Lawrence, uh, Justin Fields. We don't know how this draft is gonna, you know, play out. But as far as the Falcons, <laughs> we gotta get better in them trenches, baby. Like we ain't blocking enough, and we ain't stopping the run and stopping the pass enough. Yeah, we were seven and stopping the run this year, but that's fake numbers because we don't stop the pass well enough. So there's so many holes on this defense to where I can't just say let's pick a QB in the first round because he's not going to change anything. We don't have that same dynamic as 08. Like, we don't have a running game. So, in all honesty, I got to take Najee. I got to take that the, the running back from Alabama. I think he's going to help this team. That power O. Um, he can catch the ball at the backfield. He can do a lot of things for us to, to turn this offense around and make it more dynamic as far as the run and pass. When you just worry about the pass and you just dropping back 40 times a game, 50 times a game, it's tough to beat anybody. I'm just, it's, it's, it's tough. You have to have a running game. As you've seen in a lot of these games, we up and we don't have a running game and we're, we're trying to go to the pass to, to end games. It don't work like that a lot. It's just not good. It's not a good formula of winning in this NFL. Like, it's just not. As far as this defense, we got to get a pass rusher. Um, the draft this year doesn't have too many good pass rushers in the first round. I like Gregory from Miami, but I'm not spending a, 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 a top 10 pick for him. Maybe in the you know, 16 range to the 20s. Like, I would draft back if somebody would like to give us more capital. Now, hey, if we get that type of play, then I'll take Gregory. Then I'll take Najee. But I can't just give up um, Najee in the top 10. I can't, I can't get Gregory in the top 10. Those are two pieces I just don't see us getting. As far as the line in this offense, we have to get a stronger line. Like We have to use the people that we drafted in their strengths. Most of this line is good at run blocking. And we are trying to pass 40 times a game. We're not setting them up to be successful as far as the line. That's a tough situation, man. And if you can't win in the trenches, it's going to be hard to win games down the line. We've been a finesse team for almost 15, 16 years. We got to get away from that. Well, okay, besides the Michael Turner era. We were finesse, but we were still able to power and get in, um, in games, in drives like that. We just work. We don't have that. So if we get Najee in this offense, we maybe get a left guard in the second or third round. 
we can do something with this offense. As far as that defense, oh my God. That's <laughs> that's a tough situation for your boy. Um, <laughs> we need somebody in each level. Uh, we need a pass rusher, as I stated. We need a real middle linebacker. We need to really switch to 3-4. We can't really do this 4-3. 4-3 is so vanilla nowadays. Most teams, they in the top 10 in defense, they run a 3-4. The Steelers, the Ravens, they run 3-4s. Um, the Colts on some occasions, they run 3-4s. Like, there's so many teams that run 3-4s, and they look better because you're forcing your outside linebackers to rush. Your outside linebackers are much faster to guard the flats. Imagine Deion Jones and Foyer 3-4 rushing and Faking the rush, going to the flats, picking the ball up. You know how many picks Deion Jones got? You know how many picks Foyer got? They are able to make plays like that. And if you get a stout linebacker like Pars, hey, the, the kid from Penn State, that's who I really want. If we stay in the top four, that's who I want. We're not going to draft a receiver. We got too many receivers. Russell Gage has turned it on this year. He showed a different level. He's gotten over 700 yards. He got almost 60 catches, six touchdowns. Like, that's a key as far as receivers. That shows that we still have a good core. So, we don't need to get we don't need to get Devin Smith. We don't need to get the uh, top receivers. And it's like five receivers in, a, in a, the first round this year. We don't need that. We need defense. Uh, we need a safety. Uh, there's not too many good safeties in this draft. Uh, I've seen a safety maybe at 22 from Northwestern. Maybe he's it, but we're not going to pick him unless we in the back. Now if, we, now, if we do trade back and we get more capital, we got two picks in the first round, I can see us getting two elite players in the first round. That can change a game plan as far as his defense. We only missed a couple pieces. The linebackers is good. Grady Jarrett is good. We have, to, we have to have somebody to pair with Grady Jarrett. And we need the players to take another step as far as Fowler, as far as Marlon. They have to take a, a, another step as far as year two in this defense. If we get that to happen, the game is a changer. Uh, we need another corner. Sheffield ain't it. I like Sheffield. I think he's, he's kind of swaggy as a cornerback, but he just ain't it. A.J. Terrell, we hit jackpot. We hit gold on him. Um, he just has to be able to get more help as far as rushing. If we had better rushers, AJ Terry would be so much better as a corner because he can sit back and wait on routes like he did versus the Vikings on that third down. He waited. Mm, come here. Pick. Die for the pick. You can do that. You can come off your player and in, in zone because you have a rush. He's for the QB is throwing the ball faster than he's want to. That's how you become a successful defense. And we have to resign Cam Neal. We have to. That is one of the best players as far as safeties. Well, it's Cam Neal's top four safeties in the league. Top strong safeties, top four. He makes a lot of tackles. He forces fumbles. He, he makes receivers be feared of catching the ball in the middle of the field. We just can't use him like that because we don't have a good pass rush. Imagine what that's going to do. Um, I think... The pass rush from, from the Dolphins, I mean, from Miami is kind of good, but I don't want him to be like Vic Beasley. I need to see him have different moves. You know what I'm saying? He has to work with a pass rush guru so we can see what's going to happen as far as him in the NFL. But I think he's cold. I think he's good. I'm not going to lie to you. I think he is good. But if we get a corner or a linebacker in this first round, that will change the dynamic. I like... I like Farley from Virginia Tech. I like Sedan from uh, Alabama. Those are both corners that can pair with A.J. Terrell and change the game. But it's hard to play corner if you don't have pass rush. So if we're going to be dead in cap, some of these people got to restructure their contracts. We got to be able to sign somebody for free agent and hope somebody comes and make a change to this defense. They have plays where they make, you know, they have games where they make plays, they make stops, but they don't make it with the game on the line. You need somebody like that. You need, you need one of them players to get in people's faces, like the, the, the mean, angry linebackers. Like, we need a Ray Lewis-type linebacker in our team. Like, Deion Jones is a cool guy from LSU. I love how Deion Jones, he's a, he's a playful guy. He's not an angry-type player. You need an angry-type player on this defense. And we don't really have that. Most of these defensive players, are they calm, cool, collective. They only get angry, you know, when they make plays. You don't really see them hype people up like that. That's what you need. They just go out and do work and do damage and show, they, show their talents on the field. We need somebody that's aggressive, angry. If you don't have that in the players, you got to have that as a defensive coordinator. You got to have that as a head coach. 
Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan is not gonna let nobody. He's not gonna let nobody set up for failure. He's gonna put people in the right position. I like. I like the um the coordinator from the 49ers. Mr. Robert, I think he could be good for this for this defense. But one thing I know for sure, if we don't get an offensive coordinator to go with the head coach, it's going to be putting back in sticky situations like DK did, Dirk Cutter. We need a head coach that's going to tell people, hey, I don't like this. Let's get on the phone. Call a better play. Let's change this up. Hurry up offense. We need a head coach like that that holds coaches accountable just like he holds players accountable. Not just players accountable, because if, if the coach ain't putting them in the right position to make plays, you still gonna look sucky. You still gonna look terrible, and that's happened over the past three years. DQ, he was a brotherhood type guy. After that Super Bowl happened, no one believes in him. You don't want the players to give up on you like that. I don't want to see that. AB don't want to see that off the blank. Rich McKay don't want to see that. We gotta get some players in there. We gotta get a GM in there who doesn't miss. Who doesn't miss? I like Lewis Reddick. I think um, he's going to be able to hold uh, players accountable. He's going to draft the right places we need. He's even stated that Matt Ryan is not the issue. We have a lot more problems on defense that we have to attack. A.B., you kind of funny in that interview, man. You said everybody's off limits, which I understand. But listen, we can't trade Julio unless we get in the first and the third. If we not get in the first and third, we keep Julio in the last two years. Because if he goes to another team, he's going to do damage. And I don't want to see him in the NFC. If you trade him, trade him in the AFC. Do not trade that man in the NFC. I know how the 49ers are going to do. They might try to come at Matt Ryan. They might try to come for Julio Jones. Kyle Shanahan like both of them. I know how they're going to do. They need to, they need to give us the form. I need everybody. I need a defensive piece or a first and a third. A defensive piece or a first and a third. I got to have one or the other. I cannot keep having these bad losing seasons, and we know what we need. We need a culture change. We need somebody to step in as far as GM and head coach to turn a leaf. Like Mike Smith did in 08, like Dan Quinn did in 2015, it's possible. You just have to get the right people that deserve to be in this organization and that wants to see this organization win and succeed. Um, as, far as, as far as the offense and defense, you know what we got to have. We have a good kicker. We have to get more spicy when it comes to the special teams. Like, we haven't had a kick returner and a good punt returner in a long time. We have to be able to have receivers or corners go out there and make plays as far as that. When you get a touchdown or a good field punt return or kickoff return, it changes the momentum of the game. The defense get hyped. The offense get hyped. It just, it just shows what you, what you can do down the line as far as special teams. You have to have that. You can't just have good punters and good kickers. It doesn't work that way. But that's how it's going to go as far as the state of the organization with the Falcons. Um, let's get into some new topics of what we plan to do with this channel the rest of the season, the rest of the year. I'm planning to get into this music industry. I'm going to have some, some uh, artists on here. They're going to discuss what they're doing as far as their endeavors, as far as dropping music. We're going to do a couple listening parties where we're going to talk about the music and we're going to say who is... We're going to do a couple listening parties and uh, we they're going to actually tell you what they meant on you know the choruses and for the breakdowns, how they was feeling when they made the song. That's going to be a dope asset to this channel. We also gonna continue doing battle rap. Battle rap is getting electrifying. You know, Tay Rock's been about a verb, so you know I'm gonna talk about that. That that's the homie right there. I gotta talk about that. Wild card weekend. We're gonna get into that, but it's gonna mostly be basketball, rap, battle rap, and in the music industry, and a little bit of football down the line. We're gonna in a little bit. You know, as we get our head coach, as we get our GM, um, the draft, free agency. We're gonna talk about that too. But we're not going to be doing football every week now. Uh, it's, it's time to slow that down a little bit and get into some new things. Baseball is coming up soon. So I'm trying to change this channel, man. I tell you, I got some, some heat working on. So it's going to get deadly as far as in the dungeon. When COVID slows down, you know, we're going to have people come in. So stay tuned to the channel. It's not just about the Falcons. we trying to level up. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to take it a different level in 2021. So stay in tune, subscribe to the channel, like, let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe to all the social media platforms because we live on there too. Let me know what you think, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just a young and this is my first year. We going, I'm telling you, we going up. That's the only way to be. Shouts out to everybody. Uh, Twisted Torch TV, Jumpman T. It's a wrap! 
2020 is over.